the Blooms and community groups for photographers. I want to talk to you today about perfect lighting for your receptions. All right, today we're going to talk about those dark reception halls, places where maybe you don't have a perfect white tint to reflect light onto your subjects. And what, what do you do? How do you create the perfect lighting for any environment for killer reception images uh, when maybe that DJ is blasting laser lights around you and everything's going wrong? Well, I'm going to show you my simple system that my wife and I use. Um, it's going to take three small flashes and a few rubber bands. All right, so let's keep this simple and straightforward. I've got the help of my three kiddos today. Ta-da! <laughs> so they're gonna be our recep reception uh, guests and they're gonna do all the posing and, and dancing here. So come on into our dark space. Now this isn't as dark as your typical reception hall, right? But it's gonna look a little bit, um, from your point of view, uh, probably exposed more properly since you're watching through a camera. But we've darkened the room down a little bit. We've drawn the curtains. We've turned off a few lights, but not all the lights, right? Because in a reception hall, you're not in control of all of that. So kids, y'all can wait here. First, we're just gonna set up our flashes. So follow me over here first. To set up flashes in your reception hall, we are going to put one flash on either side of the room. And counterintuitively, a lot of times you'll see people do this, but put flashes on the dance floor. That's the last thing you wanna do. You don't wanna have your flashes close into the center of the room because that actually, due to the inverse square law of light, creates that cave look that maybe you wondered why you're getting that in your images. Why does the back of the room look incredibly dark and cave-like and then overexposure on the front? No, no nice balanced light throughout the room, right? So putting these at the farthest corners you can, uh, believe it or not, they're powerful enough to handle this because um, in a, when you're already in a dark space and you've cranked your ISO up on your camera a little bit, even a very weak, dimly, uh, dimly lit flash can do the trick. So this is my flash. I'm gonna put this on group A. If you just have old manual flashes, you don't even have to use groups, but th this will give you some extra capability. So for now, I'm gonna go ahead and put this on group A. And instead of a light stand, I'm literally gonna use uh, some of these simple little hooks from Walmart, these uh, 3M kind of hooks. So probably the longest part of this process is you need to stand up. I usually stand on a reception stair, find a place on the wall where I can push this little sticker for about 15 seconds. It's nice and stable now. It's, nothing's going to make it fall. And I'm going to put a little ball bungee around my flash. Um, and no light stands for guests to trip over, right? So that in itself is mind blowing, isn't it? It's that simple. Um, and venues should appreciate this as well because it if anyone approaches you like, you can't put that up there, just say, oh, I was, you know, this is for liability reasons. They don't want light stands. These are very, they don't do any harm to the walls. So it's for the good of the venue. So I'm gonna put that up there. I've got that light kind of facing the center of the reception hall. Let's go put the second light up and then the setup is pretty much done right over here. All right, so the second light is going up. Find a stool or chair to stand on. You're gonna stick that somewhere where you've got a line of sight across the reception hall. Put your hook on and now once I put up the second light this is all the setup it's going to take to set up your reception lighting and it's going to fill the whole space the neat thing here I put this one on group B just in case I do want to turn one light off at a time I can do that mobily but you don't have to get too fancy if you just have mobile flashes again you know just stick them up here and um, what I've done is essentially put a wall of light across the reception hall now. So this light is pointing towards this light and right in the middle, that light is all meeting. So where they would naturally be getting dimmer, it helps that they are uh, combining their forces towards the center of the hall and they're already bright out towards the source of light. So you've got a nice even lighting throughout the reception hall. It's really neat. So over here in the middle, now I can photograph almost any direction I want. This is my third and final light. This flash is gonna go on my camera, and if you have an older system of flashes, you may have to put a trigger on, um, add a trigger to your flash, but I'm using a Godox V860 here. Um, so this has a built-in trigger that will make my other flashes flash as well. Now let's look at settings real quick. So I'm not turning this flash on yet. My camera settings, I'm gonna go at 5.6 f-stop. That is gonna make my room darker, right? Which in receptions, don't we wanna make it brighter? 
Well, two things. It's hard to focus in receptions. You shoot at 5.6, more of your images, if not all of them, will come out and focus, even if you didn't focus perfectly in the dark. Um, but no, we don't actually want it brighter in the camera because that's going to create blur. It's going to show up DJ's lighting. We want to actually bring our exposure down to erase all of that light. What I do is I look through the camera. All right, kids, you ready? I'm going to look at you. I see some of the ambient lights, like we've got spotlights and things back here. And I've got to expose, and I'll show you this exposure at f5.6, uh, about ISO 500 for the situation I'm in right now. Usually at a reception hall that's darker, I might even be at ISO 2000, 3200. Um, but the point is not the number. I'm going to go at um, 1 200th of a second here, take a test shot with no flashes. The point is not the number, um, but simply showing that you have some nice ambient light. So my exposure, come here in the dark where you can see this. The exposure is a dark exposure. It's underexposed except for the lights, the ambiance of the room, candles, um, whatever you want, just show them dimly. You don't want them to be too bright, but you do want to see they exist. That's our starting point. Now I'm in manual and that setting can stay the same all night long. No changing settings, right? So now what I'm going to do is turn on my flashes. On the back of this flash, I'm going to control the strength of my on-camera flash and the strength of my off-camera flashes, and everything is in manual mode. If you put everything in manual mode and get your settings right first, you can leave it this way all night long. So let's just do a test shot. I'm actually going to, let me show you this. I'm going to turn off my on-camera flash, my master flash, and just flash these two external flashes. So let's see what we get. What I've done is I, have, I imagine this wall of light streaming across the center of the reception room. And ideally, you want your subjects to be on the same side of that wall as you. So don't photograph something too far away. You might get some stray light that's on their face. These lights aren't meant to be a key light. They're not meant to shine on and illuminate your subject. They're meant to be backlights. And they're meant to reflect around the room as a side effect of that. So let's see what we get. Juliet, you want to be part of this picture? Stand up with them. Now they're on these sides of the light too, so everything is good. Come even closer. Let's imagine you're dancing right here. And dance. <laughs> and cut. All right, freeze. Let's see what kind of shots do we get. Well, they're underexposed, but we have rim light. We have light through the room, and we have rim light on them that shows their shape, shows the three-dimensionality um, of them. The only problem we have now is we can't see their faces, which most people think of as the main purpose of a photograph. As a photographer, we realize this dimension is just as important, but now we can also create the key light. So to do that, I'm simply going to turn on my master light here in manual mode as well. And we have a white ceiling in this case. So if you have a white ceiling in a reception hall, great. This is how we're going to bounce. We're not going to bounce straight up. I'm not going to use any... Tupperware on top of my flash that sucks energy from my battery. Um, I'm actually just going to turn this back over my shoulder a little bit. So when it hits that ceiling and bounces back, it's hitting them at this perfect angle, this 45 degree angle, just like a softbox would if I wanted to light something in the studio. All right, guys, get in position. Let's see what we're shooting. Right now I've got my off-camera lights at 1 8 power manual, and I'm going to try my key light here at one quarter power. Hopefully that gives it enough power to bounce back on them. Y'all actually I'm gonna have you dance, you ready? <laughs> Y'all are doing like some kind of uh, modeling here, I love it. All right, and dance. <laughs> I can get one of each other. Oh, very serious, ballerina. You got some funky chicken going on here, I think. <laughs> That's awesome. And all of a sudden, we have these amazing three-dimensional, softly lit party shots. And instead of a dark cave, look at that. You have a softly lit ambient, still uh, the ambience in the room is saved. And I want to just take this from one more angle to show you these lights that we um, have in the background. Let's look at uh, what they look like. Can we still see them even though we're lighting this space? All right, kids, we're gonna dance right here. You ready? Mm -hmm. So now I'm shooting against the light. Instead of it being a wall behind my subjects, I'm shooting right into a light. Now that flare would normally ruin your exposure, but because we're in all manual mode, it won't affect the exposure your camera's reading. So you ready? Uh -huh. 
and action. I can just shoot and shoot and really just focus on moments and not worry about my settings anymore. I've set them once for all. And let's see what we're getting here. Oh, Juliet. Cheers, girl. All right, let's look at that. We've got some cool flair. We can see the lights. We can see the ambiance. We still see that glow of whatever candles. If there were DJ lights and they're too bright, that's fine. Just bring your exposure of your camera down and start from there so that the DJ lights will disappear. And then every light consistent and beautiful and three-dimensional. So I hope that helps. It's a simple setup. You set those settings once and for all, and you can shoot all night long. So enjoy less stress and less problems with your reception shots. Create some artwork, guys. We'll see you next time.